Hello everybody, my name is Marlo and welcome back to another episode of Techtopia where we are starting this one off by saving a villager life. This miner's uh, precarious position right here is making me awfully anxious. This happens quite a lot and then I just come along and push them back on and all is good. Not one villager, at least to my knowledge, has ever fallen off of this bridge but they do fairly frequently, as you've probably seen in my videos quite a lot, get stuck on these fences. So I think the very first thing we're going to do super quickly is just expand this bridge by one block to the side. Here comes a test subject now. Can I push this butcher off? I don't think so. I, I'm pretty sure they have a bigger collision box than I do and they bump into each other a bit easier, but the chef is proving to be a good <laughs> good uh, tester. But yeah, they seem to be doing well. Hopefully making it a little bit wider will help things out. But what we can always do if this does continue to be an issue, let's try not hit anybody with my ax. We can just put a fence post on top of this one right here, which will not allow them to actually get on top like you can here. So. I'll keep an eye on it, but seeing as this is like the most popular bridge in the village every single morning and night, I guess they flood over here from the working area to all of the homes over there. So probably makes sense to be a little bit wider as well. But guys, we are at an entire stack of episodes. This is number 64. And as always, I just want to say a massive thank you for the continued support you guys show me. It is massively appreciated and a great big welcome to any new people watching right now. One of my older videos, my ultimate tower survival survival base. I say older, not that older, like from a few months ago. It's doing really well at the moment and getting lots and lots of views, being put in lots of people's recommendations. And yeah, lots of people are subscribing every day. And if any of you happen to be new and checking out a Techtopia video, wondering what it's all about, well, thank you for doing so. And basically the gist of this series is it's a mod created by Tango Tech from the Hermitcraft server where there are uh, improved villagers. As you can see, these guys right here all have their own professions and their own buildings to go to. That right there is a blacksmith, that or is a smithy, sorry, that the blacksmith goes to, I should say. And uh, yeah, the farmer's farm, the miner's mine, so on and so forth. It's really cool. And yeah, we are making custom villages in this series. We are on number four right now. We have a uh, medieval village called uh, Mecklensvale, forgot the name of it there for a second, a desert village called Asteria, an underground village called the Undergrowth, and then this one right here is Eridwine, our fantasy elven inspired village. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this one guys, if this does happen to be your first one, and I think we should maybe try and go save that uh, cleric's life before they die from the zombie, because the guards are being a little bit slow. <laughs> anyway, let's crack on with the episode, I think I'm going to go sleep beforehand, because it does get a bit stressful here at night time. Oh, oh, good morning world, good morning. Let's fly on down and do some building, shall we? So I have quite a few things I would like to get to in this episode here today, and one of them is actually, oh no, farmer taking damage, farmer taking damage, you're burning now from a zombie on fire. Let's go and save you. Please don't die. <laughs> Oh man, it's so stressful around here, especially in the morning when the zombies, hello creeper, let's fly away, start burning and, oh hello creeper, let's fly away, just had deja vu there, <laughs> some very fast deja vu, oh this episode is all over the place already, anyway, I want to build a couple of homes in this, uh, in this episode, I know we built this massive one last time, but I do actually have a couple designs that are pretty cool and I would like to show you, so I think the very first thing we are going to do to kick off this episode is build one of those smaller homes somewhere in this village, I'm not sure where, maybe we'll put it somewhere in the middle here because it is a bit of an open area.
I was in a bit of a predicament of what colour to make the roof of this house because you can see to the side of it we have cyan but just behind it we have light blue and then to the right of it we have purple and then just behind it slightly over to the left or in front I should say we have magenta and I'm trying not to have like the same colour roof right next to each other but <laughs> that was such an in the middle position that I kind of had to just pick one and cyan is my favourite of them all so yeah I went with cyan, hopefully that isn't a bad choice. Maybe should have gone with light blue because there will probably be something in this gap which will kind of break those two apart, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. But yeah, this one right here is like smack bang in the middle of all the houses and I'm glad it's this house because I absolutely love this. I think this little section right here is super cool. The rest of it is actually quite basic, but this really makes it feel super unique. So. Yeah, I really like that. Won't show you around too much because I was able to basically show you the entire build in that time lapse. But I have gone ahead and done the interior. Real quick, I'm going to change my uh, render distance down because Tectopia and shaders don't really mix very well. <laughs> it's quite laggy, uh, especially when you have a big village like I do here. So don't need render distance when we're inside. That way we can have some actual frames. But yeah, as you can see, I've just done something super simple. We got a nice little kitchen set up in here. It's just going to be a small two person home. Got some very shiny end rods to provide lots of lighting. As you can see here, you can't, can't really see anything. Actually, you kind of can. That's impressive for only render distance six. But yeah, it does have a house on the top level so this is kind of like a four person home just two and two and in this one right here we have a bit more going on got a little jukebox over here with some uh, shelves with some stuff on can't put anything on top of here because it's not uh, a full block as you can see it folds upwards and yeah just a couple of beds some bookshelves over here and the table in the corner so last episode I asked you guys a solution for villagers getting stuck on the end rod tables and a lot of you said uh, well a few of you actually just said basically put it in a corner and there would really be no reason for them to pathfind so that's what I've done here and I've also changed that up in a couple other homes just kind of put it in the corner and yeah they shouldn't really get stuck on it hopefully now there is a ladder here leading up to a bed which will not be able to be used by villagers but I have a dream that one day in Tectopia villagers will be able to like climb ladders and actually have homes being on separate levels instead of just one I don't know whether we'll ever get that because it's probably pretty difficult to code I would imagine um, it does look very dark around here oh no I've missed some lighting okay I'll have to shove an end rod somewhere I'll find a good spot for it don't worry but yeah, I have a dream that one day villagers can climb ladders and maybe one at some point or another could go and sleep up here. Would be pretty cool, but nonetheless, it's a nice little cosmetic part of the house to put a bedroom. A very nice view of the moon behind the clouds over our very dark and misty village. I do love shaders, but let's take them off now for the next clip where we are going to be creating the village banner. So this is something I've been meaning to do for quite a long time now. I've actually been meaning to make the village banner since we gave this place the name of Eridwen a number of episodes ago. So this has been in the works for a little while now. I've had this banner design set and ready to go. I just forget it every single episode. So we're mainly using light gray, cyan, magenta, and a little bit of white here. So first things first, we need the saltire. I don't even know these guys had names, but apparently they do. And then we want the stripey one. I think that is correct. Let's just have a check. Yep, I think that's how it's going so far. Let's go back in the crafting table. We then need the oxide daisy one to get that uh, little flower shape in the center. And then the final thing I think is this, right? All the way around? Yes, to make this little thing right here. So that is the finished banner. Does it look at all familiar to you guys? <laughs> I'm not sure how great of a job I've done here, but it's kind of meant to be like the crystal we have at the top of our base up here. So yeah, it's really the best I could do for a banner. I mean, if you guys have any better suggestions, feel free to like send them to me on either my Discord server or on Twitter maybe would be good ideas. So if you can make something that's meant to resemble this and keeping with the village colors we have, that looks better than what I have here. Please feel free to send it to me. But for right now, this is what we're going to be using for the village banner. I hope you guys like it.
Now, I would like to make some extra copies of this thing, and in case you don't already know, the way that you duplicate a banner, at least in 1.12, it's obviously different in uh, newer versions because of the loom, you basically put a normal color banner, the one on the base of this one, in a crafting bench, and well, bam you get two of them. Trouble is, those require six light gray walls per each one, and I think this is the amount of light gray dye I have, so super quick, I'm going to go on a bit of a squid killing mission, also craft up some bone meal, and and just duplicate a bunch of these and then we'll place them around the village. I think one of our banners can go here in the storage room. Another one of course can go inside of the town hall. Here's probably a good spot. One up here for the guards in the barracks. I feel like we should definitely have one in the school. Quick pit stop with the banner placing, Rudolph, our enchanter here, appears to be stuck, I think. Let's see if you break free when I... Yes, okay, uh, how long have you been stuck like that, sir? <laughs> Let's break these trapdoors because they are obviously causing a problem. Now, where to put a banner inside of this library? I think right here would be a nice spot for it. One inside of the tavern, of course. Right about here is a good place for the one in the smithy. And of course, we are gonna have to have at least one in the tunnel leading to the non-usable underground tree farm. Let's just shove it right there for now. Maybe one day we will rework this. In fact, we most certainly will. I'm just waiting for when I can be bothered. <laughs> Not right now though. We will do something with it eventually, don't worry. We now have all of these banners left to place down for future buildings that we end up doing, but for right now, I think that's going to be good. What's not good is these guys right here. Remember last episode, I think it was, when we had one of our farmers just freeze up in this exact location? I, in fact, think one of them was you. Y you were the guy who froze. You've apparently found someone else to join you here. Are you starting some sort of cult <laughs> where you just stand still? I hope not. Fingers crossed it's just, just a glitch, and we're going to test that right now because I am I'm gonna re-log into the world right now. Do you move? Fingers crossed you do, otherwise, aha, okay, there we are. So yeah, stuff like this happens all the time where villagers will get stuck on whether it's end rods or just freeze in place or on trap doors or various other things. But thankfully, because I record my videos and I'm often leaving just to restart a time lapse or, you know, set replay mod going again, that's what this thing is right here. I leave the world probably I'd say at least twice an hour, so really it's not too bad of a thing that the villagers freeze up because I'm often just reloading everything so they sort themselves out. But yeah, don't know why that keeps happening. Very strange indeed. In my hands, I have some hearts of children ready to spawn in because I could probably do with a few more villagers and there's none really in particular that I want more of. I could probably use a couple more ranchers actually. Hello, Brianna. Um, is that your name? Just... Brainer. I'm probably saying it wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, I could probably use a couple more ranchers because of the whole animals dying thing. If I just show you my chat log here from uh, when we were building the house time lapse, that's what it looked like. <laughs> so maybe I should make some of these ranchers, but I also kind of want some more farmers and possibly some more lumberjacks because I haven't actually got any of them since the very first villagers we got after the guards. So I'm just going to spawn in one, two, three, four, five, and six children here. They they will grow up there's plenty of room in this big old house here that we built last episode and yeah i'll have a think of what tokens i want to buy them a zombie is breaking down my door hang on a second i thought i played on normal now yeah that was meant to stop that problem do they just not actually break down the door can i have a wait which door are you breaking down no you are breaking it okay maybe it just doesn't break <laughs> i i don't know that's very weird okay uh, i'm assuming they just oh yeah you're gonna go gonna go try again let, let me let me just watch this guy for a minute and also watch my back for creepers you got bored okay i'm guessing it's absolutely fine and i don't need to worry about it because the wiki says they can't do it so i'm gonna trust the wiki 
Whilst those scallywags grow up and become nitwits, we are going to work on a bit of a fun building project. So this idea right here that I want to do was actually suggested to me quite a few number of episodes ago from Alvi the Gamer, who basically said that I should do something between the Undergrowth and Eridoine here, kind of related to the Beacons of Gondor from Lord of the Rings. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, basically the idea is to have a line of beacons that you can set a light to that will send a warning to you know one place far away over here to another place you know the other side of the world basically or the other side of some mountains in the case of Lord of the Rings um, so yeah you'd have like 12 beacons let's say I probably won't do that many but one would be lit and set alight and then the next one would be and so on and so forth going all the way down the line until the far away place the undergrowth is uh has their beacon lit and they can see it and there's a problem and they need to go and, and help Eridween over here. That's the kind of idea of it since the undergrowth is meant to be like a dwarven and this is a bit elvish so once again I'm taking more inspiration from Lord of the Rings. I can't help myself it's just too easy to do that for Minecraft stuff like this. But yeah, I just thought that was a really fun idea. If that made no sense to you whatsoever, hopefully once it's all built, it'll make a bit more sense. I should probably clarify, I don't mean this type of beacon right here. No, that's a bit too expensive. We're going to be making our own type of beacon. Now you may be thinking, like I also was originally, that this mountaintop right here would be the perfect spot for the beacon placed in Eridoween. The only trouble is, the undergrowth is in the other direction, which is why the beacon is over here. So yeah, this is what it looks like, and it's meant to be a little bit similar to the one in Lord of the Rings. It's definitely not an exact copy, it's kind of like the same shape, I would say. There's a few changes here and there, but yeah, that's what the beacon's like look like. I may also add in some cobblestone here and there just to make it look a bit more worn down. We do have some cracked in there but there's no cracked stairs so yeah might add in some cobblestone actually just to change it up a little bit but yeah now what we need to do is add a line of these going all the way to the undergrowth which as I said is somewhere off in that direction and I think what I would like to do with them is make it so I can just about see it in the re render distance so I usually play on render distance 16 as you can see here so if we could have it somewhere like around there maybe you can kind of see the shadow of the trees or possibly there would be a good spot for it and yeah basically I just want to be able to see the very edge of the beacon off in the render distance when we get to each point of these so yeah I'm gonna start working all these beacons and we should have a nice trail leading all the way from Eridoine to the undergrowth The second beacon over there is probably a little bit too far away, I will admit that, but I could always just increase my render distance by one and it would probably be fine. If I turn to the side here you can actually see it a lot better because that's how the fog effect works in Minecraft. But yeah, it's night time now so I think we should go take a look at all of these beacons I've set up. So as I said the first one here is quite far away, a lot further than the others as you can see, had to do quite a bit of tree clearing. <laughs> around here to actually fit it in. Didn't think it made sense to have this massive flame right beside a bunch of trees so I've tried to kind of get rid of the ones in the surrounding area but that one right there looks awesome I must say it, it really does and oh hello skeleton you made me jump there. We have this one over here once again on a bit of an elevated platform with a brown sheep guarding it. Uh, there are a couple of floating leaves around still that are getting in the way because yeah tree chopping as I said <laughs> and then we have the next one over here which isn't really that elevated. Um, but it's in the swamp biome and there isn't really any elevated parts in a swamp biome so yeah we just have that one over here and got rid of the oak trees in the swamp because they were kind of in the way as that one is right there of the final beacon so I think I'm super quickly gonna actually go chop that down as long as that creeper doesn't get in the way there. 
Um, but yeah, let's get rid of this one and once those trees have or leaves have despawned I should say that should give us a bit of a better view not gonna hang around here too long because you know mobs are about but as you can see That is the view from this one right here, and yeah, this is the undergrowth beacon I know they can't really see it <laughs> um, from inside of the ravine here, but I didn't really know where else to put it. I was debating with putting another one up the top there, just at the very highest point of the ravine and kind of connecting those two, but it felt a little bit close, so I'm just going to pretend that they have somebody outside of the ravine kind of watching that uh, every, every so often just to make sure that they know to uh, inform everybody if there's a problem. So, yeah, that looks awesome. I think that is a super cool project. Thank you, Alvi, for the suggestion. So in case you're still a little bit confused as to what this is, if you've never seen or read Lord of the Rings, you honestly may have no idea. I'm not very good at explaining things, but here we go. I'll try again. Basically, the gist of this is when either... Oh, there's a creeper right there. <laughs> when either the Undergrowth or Eridwine are in trouble, they would light the beacons here. And then uh, let's just pretend there's somebody manning each of these beacons as we go along here. If the person on this beacon right here, so that one was lit, they would light theirs, and then the person up there would light their beacon, and it just makes this trail all the way along, so that if the undergrowth are in trouble, Eridwine will be informed, and vice versa. So, yeah, I just think that's really cool, and I love how this looks at nighttime. I'll be honest, it does look pretty sweet. And, yeah, I, I think we need a name for, like, the entire area of the undergrowth and uh, Eridwine because it's kind of like of the same uh, world almost with the elves and the dwarves and if we ever did anything else Lord of the Rings related we could probably even fit Mecklen's Vale into that I mean it's basically like the human area right so we kind of need like a whole name of it so these in Lord of the Rings would be like the beacons of Gondor we need our Tectopia equivalent so let me know your name suggestions in the comment below for that the snow is ever so pretty in this game isn't it Maybe not so much on YouTube for you guys because it does like to kill the quality, same as the rain does. <laughs> but yeah, I do like the snow. It, it really is quite peaceful just to sit here and watch the sun rise over our beautiful village with all of the snow particles falling down and laying on the surface. But anyway, we are not done with today's episode. There are still some other things I would like to do. One of which is to just check on my children and see if they've grown up into nitwits yet. I haven't really been around this area but I would say five days have passed by so I'm a yep there we go <laughs> there's my answer all right sweet so I'm assuming all of them have grown up now and they are ready to be given some professions so let's go grab some emeralds and buy a bunch of stuff Hello architect, hello tradesman, are you ready to sell me some things? So I think to begin with we're going to buy a bunch of stuff from a tradesman. We have six, not druids, <laughs> six nitwits correct. So I want four of them to be farmers. I know we need a bard by the way, I'm going to get one of them soon. Just not in this episode, we'll maybe save that for next time. So where are the farmers? <laughs> Somewhere along here, uh, I think it's the next one. Nope, next one. There it is, got there in the end. So... Uh, is that four? Four times seven? Yep, okay, so we want four of them, one for each crop type. Bim bam bosh, there we go. And then we will get ourselves, I think, one extra lumberjack. If I can find the token, I'm having a hard time with this apparently today. We'll get ourselves one lumberjack, and then I think we'll also get one more rancher because of the animal crisis currently going on. Hopefully, that helps things out a little bit. And then from the architect, we, of course, need the two two-person homes to go in the house we built earlier on. Let's just get uh, two of them right there. And then now we are also going to be building a four-person home. So we may as well go ahead and buy the token for that too. Still leaving us with a great whopping 43 emeralds. Oh, Maria, why on earth are you pathfinding into the corner? <laughs> what is there for you in this spot right here? Why do you have to walk there? Oh, someone's been blessed, or you have been blessed, I think. I don't know who by. <laughs> An invisible cleric, apparently, but there you go. You're now a farmer. Gonna change where you want to walk? 
No, still feel like walking into the end rod. Okay, fair enough. Well, I can replace that for you. Okay, so those are all of the tokens handed out. Let's very quickly just go ahead and place down the two two-person homes and make this valid. That didn't shine up for a second then. Scares me every time, but there's the downstairs, and let's quickly hop on upstairs. Seeing as this is only two villagers up here, there shouldn't be that much of a problem with the thin staircase up here. So, nothing to worry about. Did my bed change? Nope. <laughs> my hopes and dreams have been crushed. But yeah, I think now what we're going to do super quickly is just build up this other four-person home that I said about in the start of the video I wanted to show you guys. But before that, as always, I got to find a spot for it first. And replay mod crashed once again, but it's okay. I was only planning on a short 10 to 15 second time lapse, so we haven't missed out on too much. But this right here is the house, and it's definitely one of the shorter houses, one of the ones with not a very tall roof. It's a little chubby looking, kind of, <laughs> but I think it looks pretty good. But yeah, let's just take a quick flight on down or walk down, I guess. We'll go across this big old bridge now that we've got and go check it out a bit closer up. So yeah, as there's no time lapse, let me just do a quick walk around and show you guys what it looks like we got a bit of a dip in the roof which is something a bit different that I've done not done before which I kind of like the look of uh, here's around the back hopefully you don't get stuck on the flower pots nope you're all good um, and then yeah the other side is completely the same and the interior is very very basic so this is a four person home and there are 49 spaces inside of here to place things down and a four person home requires 48 so really this was the only non-villager item like a chair or a bed that I could place down so yeah it's pretty basic in here but as long as it looks good from the outside I think that is the main thing that counts so yeah there's another home we have so many spaces spare beds now in this village we can get so many more villagers whenever I need it which is just great something that I don't uh, have to worry about which is wonderful but that everybody is gonna do it for today's episode I really hope you did enjoy thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time bye for now